Volume sliders are an essential component of any decent options menu. To get started with making them, if you haven't already, go to the audio tab on the bottom panel of the Godot editor and add a bus for each category of audio you want to adjust. By default, there's a master bus that all audio pipes through, but you'll probably also want to add at least music and sound effects buses so the user can tweak them separately. After you've added your buses, you'll want to go through the project and make sure all audio is piped to the correct bus. This can be done by selecting the relevant audio player node and changing the bus property in the inspector. Once that's done, it's time to create our volume control. Make a new scene with an H slider as the root node with a range of 0 to 1, a step of about 0.001, and attach a script to it. We use 0 to 1 because we'll eventually need to translate this value to a more audio friendly one, but more on that in just a bit. In the script you created, add an exported string parameter named bus name, which will, shockingly, be the name of the bus the slider should control. Now we just need to wire everything up. In Godot, you don't access audio buses by name, but rather by index, which can be looked up by name. So add a bus index variable to your script so you only have to do the lookup once, and in your ready function, save the output of audioserver.getBusIndex, which looks up the bus index by name, to this variable. For setting the volume on the bus, connect the value changed signal of the slider, which fires every time the slider value changes, to a function and set the volume of your bus by calling audioserver.setBusVolumeDB with your bus index and the output of the slider value after calling Linear2DB on it. We call Linear2DB on the slider value to convert it to a more audio friendly value, as the slider itself is linear, but people don't perceive volume in a linear fashion. By calling Linear2DB on the slider value, you can make the adjustments on the slider sound more like they look. And to help show the difference it makes, here's a quick example with and without this conversion. You can also do the inverse and convert a decibel value to a linear one, which can be handy for initializing the slider to the current bus volume so that your options menu can be shared on different screens around your application and still reflect the current volume. To do so, add a line to your ready function getting the value of the bus and parsing it through a call to db to linear to convert it to a value in the slider's range of 0 to 1. And with that, your slider is ready to go. In your options menu, or wherever you want to add a volume slider, just add an instance of your volume control scene for each audio bus you have, including master so the player can adjust the audio for the entire game easily, and set the bus name property on each as appropriate, which, FYI, is case sensitive. Now when you run your game, you should be able to adjust each slider and have those changes reflected in your game's audio.